Kraft from Liège. Thank you very much for this introduction. First, I'd like to thank the committee for giving me the opportunity to present you the results of our study today. This study is about the gene expression profiles in canine idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. In the canine species, identification of candidate genes using World Genome Association study is easier than in humans. So the European LUPA project was initiated to use dogs to unravel human diseases. As human and canine IPF are clinically comparable, canine IPF was selected as a potential model for human IPF. Um, in general, interstitial lung diseases are poorly described in veterinary medicine, but the first clinical cases of canine IPF were described in 1999, and in a recent publication, a complex description was done for the clinical and imaging findings. Canine IPF affects middle to age and to all do terrier dogs. Clinical signs include progressive dyspnea, exercise intolerance with or without cough. The disease usually progresses over months and leads to euthanasia of the dogs because of respiratory failure. Inspiratory crackles are often noticed on lung auscultation, but they are not present in all cases. Pulmonary function testing is limited in veterinary medicine because it usually requires the patient cooperation. But a recent publication reported a decreased oxygenation in affected cases. Barometric whole body platysmography and the six minute walk test have been validated in dogs and are currently under investigation in affected IPF cases. Despite a thorough diagnostic workup, including radiography, bronchoscopy, bronchoalveolar lavage fluid analysis, the diagnosis of canine IPF remains challenging. The main differential diagnosis in dogs is chronic bronchitis. High resolution computed tomography findings are typical, but are not strictly identical to those in human IPF. However, the definitive diagnosis ultimately relies on histopathology, but anti-mortem lung biopsy is really realized in practice. So different biomarkers have been investigated to help diagnose canine IPF, such as endothelin-1 and P3NP. In dogs, there is clearly a breed predisposition as IPF affects more often terrier dogs, especially the West Highland white terrier. This observation leads to the suspicion of a genetic basis of this disease in dogs, but from now, very little is known about the etiology and pathogenesis of canine IPF. The aim of the present study was to gain insights into the pathogenesis of canine IPF and to identify potential biomarkers by analyzing the gene expression profiles using RNA microarray. Ten dogs were included in the microarray experiment, with five wasties affected by IPF and five control dogs of various breeds. Lung tissue were collected immediately after euthanasia, and the diagnosis was confirmed by histopathology. RNA was pulled within each group, IPF and control, using the same RNA quantity from each samples. Pooled RNA was then reverse transcribed to cDNA and hybridized to a canine specific Affymetrix gene chip. This microarray is a second generation of oligonucleotide based single color array with more than 42,000 probes assessing the expression of around 38,000 genes. To qualify for further analysis, a transcript had to be evident. That means that the probe signal intensity has to be above two times the background intensity. To identify transcripts that were differentially expressed between the two groups, IPF and control, we use a threshold of at least two-fold difference in expression between IPF and controls. A bioinformatic tool called ingenitory pathway analysis was then used to sort out the main biological functions and pathways associated with this list. 
An another biomarker biomarker analysis was done using RPA biomarkers analysis to select potential biomarkers from this list. Genes were filtered and prioritized using selected criteria. Various criteria are proposed by the software. The criteria used for this study were at least a two-fold difference in expression of the gene between IPF and control lung tissue. The gene should be known to be expressed in lungs, and the corresponding protein should be detectable in blood or in valve. To confirm the micro results, we perform QRT-PCRs for, for some genes on larger groups of dogs with 12 dogs with IPF, including 10 Westies, one Scottish Terrier, and one Lassa Apso, and also with 14 controls from various breeds. QPCR were run in duplicates for each cDNA samples. Two housekeeping genes were used for normalization of the gene expression, and results in the two groups were compared using a man with net test. Concerning the microarray results, around 800 genes were differentially expressed between IPF and controlled dogs, with 249 genes upregulated and 549 downregulated. We use ingenuity pathways analysis to sort out the main biological function and pathways associated with these genes. Fibrotic lungs were enriched in genes involved in cellular growth and proliferation, in skeletal and muscular system development and function, cellular movement, cellular development, cell-to-cell -cell signaling and interaction, and antigen presentation. Most notable among these genes were genes involved in leukocyte chemotactic proteins such as CCL2, CCL17, interleukin-8 that were found to be upregulated in IPF tissues as it is in human IPF. While fibroblast is considered as a key cell in human IPF, its role in canine IPF is currently unknown. However, some genes involved in fibroblast migration, such as the fibroblast activating protein, were upregulated in our data set. Matrix metalloproteinase were found to be downregulated in IPF lung tissue, especially in MMP7, which was surprising in the regard to the human literature. This list was then filtered using the mentioned criteria to identify potential biomarker and 34 genes meet all these criteria. The most promising was then sought out using the highest fold change. With this result, we can expect that high protein levels will be found in affected dose for CCL7, CCL2, interleukin-8, alpha-3 actinin, and serum amyloid A1. On the contrary, expected low protein levels are found for Plunk, the palate, la lung, and nasal associated protein, and MMP7. We then confirmed some of the results using quantitative RT PCR. Expression of all the major cytokines CCL2, CCL7, FAP, interleukin 8, and CXCL14 was confirmed with an increased expression in, the IP in IPF tissues. For MMPs, using QRT-PCR, there was no statistical difference between IPF and controls, while there was a trend toward a decreased expression using the microarray experiment. On the contrary, using quantitative RT-PCR, there was a trend toward an increased expression for MMP1 and MMP9. However, it was not statistically significant. Besides, Limitation related to microarray technology, this study has some additional limitation. RNA was pooled for each group, so we were not able to evaluate the individual variability, so the two groups were compared using a threshold instead of a complete statistical analysis. In conclusion, microarray experiment permits a large-scale approach but generate enormous amounts of data. Besides all mentioned limitations, this study helped to identify altered biological functions in canine IPF, 
to highlight genes probably involved in the pathogenesis and help to identify potential biomarkers for further studies. This study also shows that human and canine RPF are not only clinically comparable, but they also share common molecular characteristics. I would like to thank you for your attention and also to thank my collaborators for the University of Liège, our main partners for the University of Helsinki, and also all European partners that participate in case recruitment. Thank you. dogs really have IPF. You know, the CT scan that you show at the beginning is not typical of IPF, of human IPF. And the morphological image also is not typical. I am wondering if you see, for example, fibrotic foci, honeycombing, uh, the heterogeneity in the, that you can really say that these are, the, the work is very good to analyze spontaneous interstitial fibrosis in older dogs, but I am not sure if we are in presence of real life here. Thank you for your mark. In fact, years ago, we used only the term of IPF and not canine IPF, but then we realized that probably it's not exactly the same disease. And we call it canine IPF, but probably it's may, it may look like another human interstitial diseases. In fact, there is some similarities. Clinically, it's very comparable, but using high resolution CT, there is um, manifestations that are more like NSIP, I think, because there is a, a lot of gun glass opacities. We also saw some uh, reticular opacities, but traction bronchitis are more rare, and I think honeycombing is really rarely seen. So it's close to IPF, but it's not identical, using a high resolution CT. And concerning the histopathology, the first report were here conflicting results, and my colleague from SNT are currently uh, performing a study on larger groups of dogs and comparing them to results in human diseases, and it seems that it can also, it looks like IPF, but also UIP, but also NSIP, but this work is still under review. So. Marvin? Yes. Uh, I'm not so concerned what, what you call it, but I'll make the, one comment and one question. My comment is, is that we're not allowed to show pictures of our patients. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did you agree? Uh, <laughs> Without permission. Uh, uh, number two uh, is actually a, sort of a serious question. Um, do you know whether these dogs, uh, they're little dogs, so they probably stay in a house, uh, are they in households where there is smoking? And, and, and that would be an interesting thing to, to uh, discern. That's a very interesting question, and in fact, it's something that we'd like to analyze, but the problem is that we have not a lot of dogs, so it's difficult to perform a good um, epidemiological analysis. Um, it really depends, because some of dogs uh, live rather outside, some of them always stay always in the house, and it really depends on the manners of the owners, but I have to say that many dogs have owners that didn't smoke. No. Do not smoke, yes, sir. So I, I have a question for you. Uh, have you had an opportunity to look at the overlap uh, between the genes that are differentially expressed in your dogs and genes that are differentially expressed in, in, in humans with IPF? Because some are, are actually opposite, like Plunk and MMP7 are up in humans with IPF, but down in your dogs. Um, I think that first for MMP7, I think it's really, um, it shows us the micro limitation because it was not confirmed at all using RT-PCR. So I think it was just uh, something that deals with the problem with micro that you always need to confirm the result. For the rest, I try to um, make an analysis to compare. The problem is that it's not exactly the same data set because it's a specific canine chip. 
But uh, looking individually, there is a lot of common pathways, and I'm still trying to use a bioinformatic tool just to make a complete analysis to compare all genome um, yeah. between the two. But there is some common pathways, some of them, but some, yes, are not completely identical. And uh, back to Moises's point, uh, do you have, um, do, do you see honeycomb cysts in your pathology? Uh, we do see some in city, but rarely, and I think in histo it's also a finding, but quite a rare one, but there is a lot of distortion of lung architecture. But maybe the dogs are euthanized before uh, a very progressive disease because we do not do oxygen delivery at home for dogs, so usually they are euthanized. It's quite a severe disease when you euthanize them, but maybe not as severe as what you can see in your affected patients. So I have a quick question in the back. So am I right in interpreting sort of the big, the high level view of this is that this is an animal model that helps you understand more the pathogenesis, but not really an animal model for testing efficacy? Yes, the problem is that we are not sure about the prevalence of the disease, but it's probably rather rare, even in predisposed breed. So probably it will be difficult, at least yet, to have enough cohort to perform an analysis to test for a new treatment. But uh, I introduced it with uh, this LUPA project, and the fact is that it's really interesting in dogs to perform whole genome association study to identify candidate genes. And that's why we are still working cases, because we need like around, usually it's 50 to 100 dog affected and controlled dogs from the same breeds. And I think it's something that will be probably very interesting to identify candidate genes, and some of them might have not been studied yet in humans. Okay, thank you very much. Thank Anna. you.